Good morning everybody and welcome once again to my humble abode. Today I'd like to go on and do some more bees, this time specifically some of the gendustry stuff. There's quite a lot in this uh, mod but not as much as the other extra bees. Let's have a quick look at this one first of all. So let's go to the cold bees and here I have been building some more machines. Now let's start at the back here. Here we have a mutagen producer. Basically, in this case, I'm using uranium from industrial craft, and this is producing mutagen. And the mutagen I'm feeding into this advanced mutatron. And the mutatron allows you to mix bees up. So let's have a quick look at that. So, for example, let's take an imperial drone, and I need some, it says I need some labware. Okay, let's quickly go and get some labware. I have six in here. I need to make more because this will use up quite a lot. I'll put these in here. And then we take a princess. Now I've got all sorts of princesses in here. And let's put try. If I left click on one of these, it may go or may not go into the into the princess slot. In this particular case, this one went in. So a modest princess that will produce an Argentium queen. Ah, there's one particular one. What else have we got in here? Modest princess. Those are the last of the. I went through all the princesses. No, oh, common didn't try. Cultivated, industrious, infernal. And the infernal will produce a cobalt queen and actually we can do that one because I haven't done one of these before and click that the infernal queen's one of the uh, the mundane bees which comes from one of the hives you can find in the world so here we have now a cobalt clean queen let's go have a quick look at its proper her properties so this is quite Typical for these uh, bees that will produce, let's have a look at three possible specialities cobalt nuggets. This particular bee, bee will produce cobalt. And it's relatively, this is also quite normal. It likes it to be, it works in, in the day and it works also in, the, in caves but doesn't work in rain. For these type of bees, it seems to be the case, and especially here, the fertility. That's another one. But this particular bee is pristine stock, which means it's not going to die off. And that also means there's a really low chance of it becoming um, dying off during the mutation genetic process as well. So, so now we have an excellent queen, which we shall go and do something with. But it needs hot and arid, and it has no resistance. So we have to either take this one to the nether, or the desert, I think. I think no. I think it has to be in the nether, in the desert. We can go there in a minute. Let's have a look at another one of these. So I also have in my backpack here a few more bees. So that's an infernal princess which we used up last time. A meadows I've already got. A robust princess. Already have unusual yes. Water princesses. I didn't have one of these. Marshy, I've got Ender Princess will not so be so interesting, I don't think. Let's go back here. Here we have some skulking drones. So let's try the skulking drone in here. Remove the Imperial drones and put the skulking drone in. Has he gone to here? So let's try the skulking drone within and with one of these princesses. Ah, so with a common princess, it actually has three different outputs. A porcine, a beefy, and a poultry queen. And what these do, that's, that's this ignoble stock, so we'll make it beefy. We click on it and it generates this. Now the difference between 
this advanced mutatron and the normal mutatron as you can choose here what the output could be so now we have a beefy queen if you just use the normal mutatron it's generally uh, it just randomly picks one of the three so it's well worth getting the advanced as far as i can see right so now i've produced two new bees a cobalt and a beefy now the beefy i haven't analyzed yet let's do that first of all oops so again it's got one child it's the standard tolerant and it produces a beef nugget and you can eat these beef nuggets so let's go and put this will be normal I guess normal. let's go and put this over in a hive um, where will one beans dwell so what have we got in here nothing so we can put the beefy queen in here and he'll be happy or she'll be happy working away and we'll produce one offspring in a while also at the same time let's go off to the nether arid bees and you'll see here I have two little sentries Sentry mode activated. <laughs> right and we should put this cobalt queen in here I didn't check what the flowers are just flowers okay well we have flowers around here and in here do I have anything special modest princes so this is working it's also a pristine queen and it's producing lots of drones in fact I probably got more than sufficient number of drones now and parch cone let's take those and go back I think this will actually go straight back yes So here I've got some industrial apiaries which are working away. This one here has got, uh, I've got no more space. I need to get rid of some of the stuff I've got on me. Let's do that now. Here I've got a tesseract, which I can put stuff into this chest here, and they'll disappear through the tesseract back to base. There you go. Just see it down there. So in here we've got Stanum dro Stanum drones and a stanum queen and this one here we've got a ferris queen and the ferris queen produces iron nuggets so let's get rid of some more we need space and this it uses up it's quite fast actually surprisingly enough i didn't expect it to be as fast as it is but it's sort of producing um iron nuggets are quite a rate i just did this yesterday afternoon in real time and it's already full Anyway, enough of that. Let's leave that out. It's got a bit of space to work. And down the bottom, I've also got another a lead stand, a plumbum, which is producing lead. And this is also full. And we have in here a, a stanum, and that's producing tin nuggets. And it's running out of power by the looks of it. So I need to do something about that as well. I actually don't know why it's running out of power, it should have plenty. Oops. Get rid of him. And let's get rid of him completely. What can I get rid of in here? Actually not much, let's just do that and then put this one to the end of the pouch. Right. Maybe I need to put another duct in here. I thought there was one underneath actually. Let's just have a look. Again, I've got the same problem. Too full. In fact, let's sort out that problem first of all. Let's put these bees into here. Especially the ones that I just picked, which haven't yet been analyzed. That's all. Right, that's all. 
for now. In fact, I suspect they haven't got any honey left, so they're not being analysed. They'll just keep stay. They just keep going round in here, which is fine for now. Right, where were we? Mutatrons. Um, all of these bees. I said, come. I want to take something out of here. Let's take some stunum drones out of here. And we shall see if these have actually got any further mutation possibilities. So here we have the stunum. In this particular case, I've modified it to make it, to produce four offspring. And a wrong one. Actually, it can produce a plumbum. So the stanum can produce a plumbum, which I've already done, obviously. And a phrase drone, what does this one do? Unknown genome. Okay, this one I've also genetically modified. As you can see, it's tolerant to flyer as well as everything else. Plus, it has a, a tolerance to humidity and temperature by two in both directions. Obviously, producing and nuggets, and does have some f f other modifications. So let's see if we can find another modification for this B. I would like to get another industrious princess. If I've got one in here, if I haven't, I might go and borrow one. No, actually, I won't borrow one. Let's see if we have any luck with this one. So. That was the ferris drone. I will just try going through any of all of these and see if any of these princesses will produce a mutation. Oh, I had industrious here. No. So I can't find a mutation with this. Let's have a look at my database. So this was a ferris drone. Resultant mutations. So I produced using a common and industrious produced a ferrous. Further mutations. Uh, we, there's one I can find possibly. No, and the others are all unknown. So we don't. We're not that far yet. Another interesting bee, if I remember rightly, was one of these. It wasn't the rocky bee. The rocky bee is great because it has a lot of good properties. As a resilient bee, I think, because this has a lot of uh, further mutations, and that's made with a, a robust and an industrious. A robust is made using a, a tolerant and an unwary, and a tolerant is a, a rocky and a diligent. And the fur that's a, yes, and the further mutations. Well, there's not very many in that one. So this is the one we want here: the resilient. So have I got a resilient with me? Let's have a look. No, I do not have a resilient. But there should be one in here. One resilient around. And in fact, I think this has already been genetically modified because it's got in here uh, nothing special there it's tolerant in all these directions here. so what we can do with this is to make it also increase the number of offspring so let's have a look at doing that that's called fertility and let's what have I got here I think I got 63 ferrous drones yes and in this chest I've got things organized in a way so here we have um, a gene sample. So this one is the ignores day and day or night. So this one here is the flowering, the flowers it eats or takes. This is the speed it produces. This is the cave dwelling, whether it works, uh, it has to have direct skylight or sunlight. This is the effect it has. This one's beautific, beautific. Lifespan short or normal. I haven't got all of them yet. Territories average. 
temperature tolerance either none or go up to both two fertility one two and I've actually got four so what we do with that is we take that temperature four we've got two of those that's good what else we got in here flowering that's really to do with pollination tolerant flyer works in the rain and temperature tolerance so we can have both in two none at all both in directions in one and here we have the, um, the species so I've got imperial industrious tolerant water robust eldritch and stanum so what I would like to try and get in here is an, a species for the resilient drone but the first thing we have to do is how do we actually get that so here we have a genetic sampler so I haven't also got to haven't got the type of ferrous drone so let's put the ferrous drone in here in fact put them all in and it will produce for me here a uh, sample it uses a blank gene samples and genetic labware and I haven't shown you how to make those yet so this is cave dwelling so this is cave dwelling true let's move so before I start all this let's just sort my inventory right good so that's cave drilling cave dwelling true flowering type slowest it takes a few seconds but not very long to do this it's quite a fast way flowering slowest ah species ferris that's the one I wanted And the last one will be tolerant fryer true. So out of these, we will take the the ferrous type, which is this one, put that over here, and we'll get rid of the others. We can basically cook the others, so we don't want this or this because we've got already those genes. And it, what you do is it cooks them in this. In this case, I'm using redstone furnace, and it comes out in here as a blank gene sample. Now what I've also got in here is a, a genetic template. So what we want to do next is to take this fertility that I've got here and put it in the crafting station or crafting table, doesn't matter what. So when I've glued this, this here says gene samples can be added. And it's here says it, this one I've taken it out, it's got 13 chromosomes. And the one I've added is the fertility four, which you can see in grey. I've actually not going to do this because I've already done this because before. And let's go to get that one out of here. So I think that's in here. So we'll put the fertility four back in here, and we'll leave the leave the blank one here. And here it is, the fertility four. What I can now do is we have. I want to add imprint that fertility for to this particular bee uh, so what you do is you take the genetics template here put it in the top oh, that's got seven chromosomes on it let's take this one fertility four and these seven chromosomes are so it, it ignores day and night it's a fast producer it's cave dwelling it's humidity tolerance is both two fertility is four tolerant flat and temperature tolerance is two. Uh, that's pretty good. Well, this one's already got most of these properties. So let's just add one of these. I only want one. Because once I've done it, otherwise I use up all the lab where I don't get any real benefit from it. I will have one ferrous drone that I can then crossbreed with the princess. So we have to go and get the princess out. Actually, I think the first drone was already got. This wasn't the one I wanted at all, was it? It was the, the resilient drone. Yes, this one. Because this had a fertility of one. Oddly enough, a fertility, a fertility of one is also quite useful. As later on, you don't really need a whole lot of drones to be produced. 
you may only don't maybe only want one or one or have a couple around with, with the right properties and you can then carry on producing whatever it is that it has a byproduct so now i have a, a resilient drone which let's have a look at the bealizer oops i've done that twice now haven't i this resilient drone has now an offspring of four and actually its flower type is rocks which is re reasonable because it came from a rocky dro uh, drone in the first place so now we go and find the resilient princess which I might even have that with me oh, actually it was the robust princess I want isn't it Tolerant. I've forgotten which was one. I wanted to do now. I'm crazy. Let's have a look. Is this the one with the lots of further mutations? I think. Yes, it is, isn't it? I think it is. The resi oh, I need to look at the database. Ah, yes, it's the resilient one I do want to do. Good. It's one with lots of further mutations. So, let's have a look at those and see if we can find a good mutation for these. So, the drone in here. Let's go through the princesses and see if we find something that's actually interesting. What do we have here? Rusty Queen and a Leaden Queen. I reckon that that produces iron and this produces tin. That's from the Meadows Princess. Valiant doesn't work. Neutral, no. Tolerant, no. Rocky, no. Infer, diligent, no. Modest. Ah! Oh. A modest one produces. Oh, I was modest last time. A corroded queen and a leaden queen. I do not know what the corroded queen does. Let's have a look in any eye first of all. Here we have the corroded queen. And does it tell me anything about it? Ah, oh, so I can make this in two ways either with a wintry and a resilient or a modest and a, a corroded. Uh, a modest and resilient. The same here. So that's, actually that's the, the quick way of finding things out. But he doesn't tell me this is a corrosive queen and this is a corroded. Hmm. That's a vicious stone and a malicious princess. Great names. <laughs> and we can't find out from here what they produce. I don't think... No. Okay. So, what else did we have in here? We tried all of these. Can't try drone. Yes, I've done them that one, haven't I? Uh, where was I? Infernal, diligent, water, rocky, sorceress. Cultivated. Usually, yeah, actually, quite a good one. Ah, a marshy. So marshy produced a lusted queen and a tarnished queen. Okay, let's produce a uh, a lusted queen and see what happens with this one. Did I just make a mistake? Yes. So now having a lusted queen, let's go and see what this one does. Put him in the put her in the analyzer. So it has possible mutations, and it has nickel comb. Ah, so that means it produces ferrous, I think. And again, I haven't done the fertility on this queen, but I could do. But it's ignoble stock, and the likelihood is that with ignoble stock, it can die in the mutatron 
and when it does die you end up with this genetic waste and here I have some pork nuggets that I got from the pork porkine princess and what you can do with those is eat them so I've got enough uh, hunger so look no I haven't got enough hunger yet okay oops back to you so where were we now let's go back to the warm bees and have a look at the one we just did here so we've got the beefy princess and the beefy drone unknown genome but ignoble stock so let's do this now analyze these two so it's a basic so also one by one B and this is uh, the same possible specialities of beef nugget so what I will do with this now is I shall come back to base and take the drone and add to the drone those seven um, chromosomes I had before which is this one because that's also got to it its fertility tolerance here so this was the beefy drone which is this one here and because this is an ignoble stock it can it will likely to die actually it's quite a high chance so what I'm going to try with this one is to crossbreed it and see if we manage to do it that way using the alpha as a, as a crossbreeding tool so now I didn't analyze that one let's have a look at this B again so now you see it's got four and it's a fast producer and it's tolerated in both directions by two back to the warm bees and what I do with this one is I put it into here because this one's got the stabilizer in it and the stabilizer basically prevents it producing new types ah and this one here is actually a copper nugget so I have been producing from this hive some uh, copper I don't really want that in there if I can get them out stick him over there right good they, will, they should all go into the apris backpack here so what i wanted to do is to put the beefy princess and the beefy drone and see if i get a, a good one so let's have a back look here again so this was the cuprum cuprum princess let's analyze her and one of the drones also ignoble stock but this one's now been has got the four fertility and it hasn't got the it's not a tolerant flyer and it produces copper nuggets and it does have further mutations copper drone same thing it was also a fast producer if I nope not a fast producer we have another one here don't we so this is the this is the fast producer slowest worker and this is the fastest worker so we could also try to mutate these two here so that we get the fastest worker from both of those could actually do that in this alvary here it also works in this one it has less uh, mutation mutators in here so this one's got five this one's got three Got, got plenty of uh, ender eyes in there this one I think has got plenty as well seven and it's also in this particular case it's actually also automated I, I want to turn the automation off because I don't want it to go around until we check what the bees are they come out of it right let's go back to, to base and have a look back at the other machines in here right so this is the one we saw the genetic sampler which takes samples out of bees 
into a little sample which you can then use. You can then take those samples, for example, in here. Right, wrong one. In here, I've got these samples. I could actually make a stanum or a ferrous drone. So I could take this sample out of here and, and then add it to one of these. So this one's got 12. So we've got in here. This is a genetic replicator. Now the genetic replicator, genetic replicator takes lots of power, liquid DNA and protein. So to get those two things, you'll see that I've actually slightly messed up this, but I want to get rid of this. And here it's got protein in the in this one. Here we've got the protein liquefier. This takes raw meat, various different types of meat. So we can put fish, raw meat blobs, raw pork chops, raw chicken, raw meat blocks, raw meat nuggets, mine factory related, raw beef, flesh from, uh, I think that's from the nether, isn't it? And that's actually quite good, that produces a lot of protein. And we're back to the beginning again. So, pork, beef and chicken are the usual ones, plus some others. So I've got in here that. And unfortunately when I dragged the pipe across here, it connected to that uh, protein producer. So I ended up with uh, protein in here. So I've just disconnected this pipe here. So hopefully it will drain out the next time I do a mutation. And in here I've got bees and, and genetics labware. And that's producing liquid DNA. So what we can do, for example, is to take this... Where did I put it? I should have 13 gene, 13 gene samples on. So in here, ah, here we go. This is actually the robust one. So I can produce robust, let's do this. What you could also do, here we have the genetic transposer. And you can, I think you can use this one, yes. This you can use for copying. So, for example, I want to copy this one here with, with this one here, and it will produce a. I want to copy these 13 chromosomes. Oh, what did I just do? Fertility 4. Oh, I added that onto this one. But what I wanted to do was to take the ferrous type, didn't I? So you can add this ferrous. Now that'll add a different way. What I wanted to do is to replicate this. This is the empty one here. So I have this two of these now exactly the same. What I want to do now is to take this template here and put that onto the table here, even though it's got 13 genes. I put this one in, in here, the thirteen group, and this sample in here, this sample in here, which is ferrous. And this time, this is robust, but this one will be a ferrous. So you simply overwrite the species. You can then take this one in here and put it into here, and it will produce a ferrous queen. And it will always be of ignoble stock. But you don't need to worry about that so much because you can use the genetic stabiliser to stabilise the ignoble stock. So, oh, it takes a few seconds. And here we have a ferrous green. As I said before, it's ignoble. And I think it gets all of the uh, properties. Let's have a look at this uh, with the analyzer. Oh, sorry. It had put into the. Uh, it had put into it before, so it's got both tolerant temperature tolerance up and down. One, so we can take this princess now, and we can use her in one of these. Uh, um, industrial apron's the best place. So here I've got the form. 
we don't really need to because this is also this, this one's a pristine ferris queen that's ignoble and these are all in use at the moment so got, what's this one doing down here that's done so that's producing tin plumbum producing lead and we've got another plumbum here but at this stage i have quite a lot of plumbum drones and they're obviously different types because if they were the same type or genetic had the same genetic properties these would all be of the same 64. so this one i haven't treated but obviously not first one working away and this one we haven't got any at the moment but this is obviously ignoble stock because i've got this genetic stabilizer here which as you see it doubles the energy but halves the uh, reduces completely the um re genetic genetic decay so it doesn't die and that was about it i was going to look at these last time i said i was going to look at these electrical state stimulators but i decided not to for the time being anyway i did try them um but i wasn't too happy because i, I realized after i did them all i actually don't need them so many because you can actually stack up the the tubes that you put into there or the cards i think anyway that's and i haven't quite found out the figures so i have to do that as well so right so this is this device we dealt with that one in fact i think i've done with all of these now this is just yep yeah. yes i think we've dealt with them all this one you can create new bees from scratch this one you can get the genes out of a bee it's random this one you can copy the genetic samples around so you get a blank sample when you've copied one around because before that had the for the species ferris in it didn't it and this one here is to actually put the the genetics onto that particular bee right i think that's it for today i hope you enjoyed this episode until next time bye for now